Hello guys, welcome back, welcome back to another video, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about whether you should buy the iPad Pro 2018. So let's begin. Okay, so the iPad Pro 2018. This was the biggest change Apple did ever to the iPad lineup, in my opinion. When Apple introduced the new iPad Pro, this generation, the design, the way they changed the design was just unbelievable. It was a huge step up from the previous iPads. And yeah, it was. I liked it a lot. And I think today, this is a bargain you can buy if you're looking for a new iPad. And I'm going to talk you through you why. So let's talk about the general specs first. Let's talk about the display. So the iPad Pro has a liquid retina display with resolution of 2388 by 1668. That's 265 PPI. And it has ProMotion, uh, which means 120 Hertz of refresh rate, which in Apple's uh, lineup is the only device that has 120 Hertz of refresh rate. Not just iPads, but any other device. And that's because, you know, 120 Hertz eats a lot for the battery. So this iPad has a huge battery. This is the only one that can withstand it. But yeah, 120 Hertz refresh rate, that's nice. It's way more smoother when scrolling. And this has 600 nits of brightness, which is okay. I mean, under bright sunlight, you're not gonna be able to see much. But in general, it's a good display to use. It also has P3 color gamut. So editing photos uh, will give you the P3 color gamut, which give you the accuracy. Yeah, it's a good display to watch content on. It's not an OLED display, it's an LCD panel, but it's a good display, I would say. And you got the two options, either 11, 11 inch or 12.9 inch. Okay, so let's now talk about the battery. The iPad Pro 11 inch has a 7,000 milliamp battery, which Apple says will last 10 hours a day. For me, it lasts about one to one and a half days, depends on the usage. So if you're gonna be running games like COD Mobile, it will last you probably for a day. But if you're gonna be watching content, writing emails, reading the news, it'll probably last you one and a half days. Let's now talk about the connectivity. Uh, the iPad Pro has a USB-C port and when Apple announced the USB-C port, it was amazing because now you can connect so much fuel fields with these. So you don't need to have any more lightning adapters. You just plug it straight in, you're good to go. You can connect monitors, you can connect external SSDs. You can charge your iPhone now with the iPad Pro, which is cool. I really like that feature and I use it sometimes. So USB-C is a huge step up and I really like USB-C. Now they even added Thunderbolt with the new iPad Pro one. So the iPad Pro is really becoming a computer replacement and I like the fact they added USB-C. Let's now talk about one of the most important uh, categories, the design. As I said, the, when the Apple announced this iPad Pro, it was just the design was just, it was a huge step up from the previous iPads. and. I like everything about it. I like the flat edges. It's just so much easier to hold. I like the fact that it's super thin because it's like holding paint. It's like holding a magazine or something, a journal. So yeah, it's awesome. And it, the fact that it's thin means it's also lighter. And for some people carrying this in their backpacks is really important because I'm pretty sure a lot of students out there are going to be using this as a note-taking device and stuff for school. and. Yeah, it's real light, so uh, carrying it in a back backpack shouldn't be a problem. And I like the fact that you now reposition, reposition the way you now plug the Apple Pencil to the iPad Pro. Instead, now it's a magnetic uh, pass-through uh, sensor, I guess, that recognizes the Apple Pencil's there, and it connects and it charges it as well wirelessly, so that when you take it out and use it, it's ready to use. And that's what Apple should have done in the first place and I get why they didn't because 
the iPad Pro last time had round edges and just connecting the Apple Pencil wouldn't be so easy. But with flat edges, thanks to the flat edges, it now allows them to connect the Apple Pencil this way. And that's, yeah, that's way better. And that's how it should have been in the first place. But now we got it and it's good. Let's now talk about the smart connector. So the smart connector, it has been since the first generation iPad Pro came out. And I gotta say, it's quite unreliable. When my brother had a 2016 iPad Pro 9.7 inch, his smart keyboard completely failed. It wouldn't pro work properly. And it was the smart keyboard because when we bought another smart keyboard of the iPad Pro, it worked. So the smart keyboard failed. And this one is also now a bit, no, it's not working properly basically. It keeps disconnecting and it doesn't recognize the accessor when I put the iPad Pro in the keyboard mode. I always have to unplug it like this and plug it back in for it to recognize that it's there, but it just wouldn't and it's so frustrating. And this is not the first time happening. And let me know guys in the comments if you had the same issues, but Apple needs to fix the smart connector issue and because it's unreliable. I had this iPad Pro for two years now with the smart keyboard and you know from an Apple accessory I expected that to last longer and especially if it's this much this much expensive I expect it to work properly and this is a bit disappointing and I think Apple should come up with a new way to connect the keyboard because this is not good. Let's now talk about audio. So the iPad Pro, like it always had, had a quad speaker system and yeah, watching it is, watching content is amazing. You get stereo speakers and they're really loud, these quad speakers. So it just enhances the experience when you watch YouTube videos or movies. The quad speaker system is also the best in its class in the tablet market. And speaking of microphones, you have a dual mic array, which when I was school conferencing, sounds are brilliant so yeah you're gonna have no issues but most of us are probably gonna be using headphones anyway let's now talk about the cameras so the ipad pro at the back has a 12 megapixel camera which can record up to 4k 30 or 60 frames per second video and i believe this is the same camera from the iphone 10r and then at the front, the iPad Pro has a 7 megapixel camera that can that can record 1080p uh, when Zoom conferencing. So it is better than in Macs, you know, Macs have 720p. This is a bit better. So Zoom conferencing shouldn't be an issue. But let's be honest, probably not a lot of people are going to be using the camera on the iPad Pro. So... But if you walk, if you need it, it's there. Scanning documents or taking pictures of important stuff will probably do. This camera will do. Okay, now I'm gonna be answering the question whether you should buy the iPad Pro 2018, and I think yes because you can only find these for five hundred pounds refurbished, and I think that's a bargain because this is the only device that has 120 hertz in apple's device lineup you can buy an ipad air 4 for the same price or well, not similar price but it's a bit less you know it has 60 hertz refresh rate the display is a bit worse apparently just get one of those i would say this device is only three years old and its successors the, the ipad pro 2020 and the ipad pro 2021 haven't really changed much you know the ipad pro 2020 the only difference it has to this is a ultra wide camera a lidar scanner and a the same processor with one core unlocked that's not much of a difference is it so i'll just say get one of those and you can be happy i'm pretty sure that's all that people are gonna need the ipad pro on 2021 on the other hand it has a lot of changes it has the m1 chip it has 16 gigs of RAM, it has up to 2 terabytes of storage, it has Thunderbolt ports and the 12.9 inch model gets a now a liquid retina XDR display which is, it's brilliant. But again, I don't think the iPad Pro needs the M1 chip because there's not much to support it. So why would Apple add an M1 chip unless WWDC21 is coming up in June 
Maybe Apple will show us something crazy for iPad OS, but the M1 chip, I think, is pointless on the iPad Pro. And I would say just get one of these. The A12X Bionic will do for most people when you play games, when you do whatever. Yeah, it's amazing. The only thing though, with the M1 chip, you get 16 gigabytes of RAM, which with multitasking is gonna be way better than you get with this. This only has four gigabytes of RAM, which with multitasking, is not so easy. Uh, should you buy this over an iPad Air 4? I would say yes. If you can find these for 500 pounds or less even, that'll be a bargain. Should you buy this over the iPad uh, Pro 2020? Depends what you want. If you want the ultra wide camera and the lighter scanner, you can buy these. They cost about 700 pounds. Should you buy the iPad Pro M1? It's your choice, but you can go with the newest and the most modern uh, I would love to have the iPad Pro M1, but I just think if I would have a budget, this will this would be enough for me, and I'm pretty sure this will be enough for most people. And that's why I think the iPad Pro is just a bargain today. Yeah, guys. So that's been it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.